Hi, welcome to Odyssey Academy. I'm Stacy Delzite, Manager of Transportation Technical Solutions here at Intersys. Before we get started, I just want to give a little background on why we are showing North Star and Odyssey branded batteries in the presentation today. Back in 2019, Intersys, who has been producing the Odyssey brand battery for nearly 25 years, purchased North Star. The two batteries are very similar, both using a technology called thin plate pure lead. If you aren't familiar with thin plate pure lead technology, our Odyssey Academy trainings will help explain some of the unique features of this product. Our training topic today is understanding state of charge. So let's go ahead and get started. After the training, we hope that you will understand what state of charge means and how it is related to voltage. You should also be able to tell the difference between several different types of voltage readings and recognize why knowing a battery state of charge can be useful. Finally, you'll have a chance to get any questions you might have answered. First, we'll talk about what state of charge means. A lot of people think that if a 12 volt battery has a voltage of 12 volts, it's fully charged. And if it has a voltage of zero volts, it's fully discharged. That is not the case at all, but voltage and state of charge are related. The scale just doesn't go from 12 to zero. When we talk about state of charge, we are really comparing how much battery capacity the battery has at the moment compared to the battery's rated capacity. For example, if a 100 amp hour battery has 75 amp hours remaining, then the battery is at a 75% state of charge. We can estimate state of charge by measuring the battery's open circuit voltage. We'll go into more detail about what open circuit voltage means a little later. But on this chart, we are showing how open circuit voltage relates to state of charge for thin plate pure lead batteries. The numbers will change for other battery types, flooded, AGM, or gel, but not a lot. One of the key takeaways from this chart is that a fully charged 12 volt battery has an open circuit voltage well above 12 volts, closer to 13 volts, in fact. Also, a fully discharged battery has an open circuit voltage of 11 and a half volts, nowhere near zero volts like we might expect. Moving on to discuss different types of battery voltage, there are several types of voltage associated with batteries, and it's important to understand the differences. We'll start with the nominal voltage. This is the voltage that is mentioned when someone says they have a 12 volt battery or a 6 volt battery. Technically, this value isn't measured at all. Nominal voltage is used to understand what battery is needed for a particular application. For example, if you have a 12 volt trolling motor, motor then you need a 12 volt battery to operate it. But really, the 12 volt trolling motor is designed to function within the operating parameters of a 12 volt battery. It will probably work fine if the battery voltage is anywhere between 11 and 15 volts because it's normal for the battery to see that type of voltage range depending on the situation. Looking at open circuit voltage that I mentioned earlier, this voltage reading is taken while the battery is at rest, not charging or discharging. To get a good open circuit voltage, the, the battery needs to have been off charge for a while since surface charge develops during charging. How long the battery should be off charge varies by battery type, but for thin plate pure lead batteries, we recommend at least four hours. Now moving on to on charge voltage readings. This reading is taken while the battery is charging. It's normal for a 12 volt battery to have an on charge voltage reading well above 14 volts, depending on what phase of charge is happening. We recommend that our thin plate pure lead batteries absorb charge for several hours at 14.7 volts. 
in floating applications where the battery is constantly charging to maintain a full state of charge, the float voltage for our thin plate pure lead batteries is about 13.6 volts. Finally, under load voltages are taken while the battery is supporting a load. It's normal for the battery voltage to drop while it's supporting a load. The amount of the voltage drop depends on the size of the load. We're explaining all these types of voltage just so you're aware that simply having a voltage reading is not enough information to fully evaluate a battery situation. You need to know the conditions of when that voltage was taken. For example, if a battery has a voltage of 11.3 volts, that could mean the battery is 100% discharged if it's an open circuit reading, but it would mean the battery is at a higher state of charge if the battery is supporting a heavy load. All of these types of voltage readings, except nominal, can be taken with a voltmeter. We're showing a couple of different voltmeters here. They're generally pretty easy to use. Some are more sophisticated than others. There are digital meters and analog meters. Some are actually multimeters, which means they might read resistance and current in addition to voltage. You'll want to understand the tool you have before using it to be, the, to be sure the correct settings are made. The meter needs to be set to read DC voltage and the red probe should touch the positive terminal of the battery while the black probe touches the negative terminal and a voltage reading will be displayed. For the best reading, make sure the probes are actually touching the battery terminals. You don't want them touching the hardware or cables. You might wonder why understanding state of charge is important. First of all, it can be very helpful with troubleshooting issues. If you call our technical support group about a problem, one of the first things we will want to know is the battery's open circuit voltage. That will let us know the battery's state of charge. If it's low, then we'll ask about the charging source and when the battery was last used without issue, because all that can point to whether we actually have a battery issue or possibly an issue with the application and the battery simply needs to be recharged. Also, knowing state of charge can explain a battery's performance in an application. Since state of charge is a measure of how much capacity is currently available, it's normal for battery runtime to decrease as the state of charge decreases. This is pretty easy to understand if you've ever watched the battery charge indicator on your cell phone drop throughout the day and you're not able to recharge it. You just intuitively know that you won't be able to use the phone much longer as the battery's state of charge goes down. Finally, state of charge is very helpful for monitoring batteries that might be in stock or not being used for seasonal applications. We haven't mentioned it yet today, but all batteries self-discharge when they aren't being used. This means that their voltage drops over time. In order to keep batteries healthy, it's best that open circuit voltage is monitored and batteries are recharged if needed, so they stay above a 50% state of charge. For thin plate pure lead batteries, we recommend that batteries in stock stay above 12.2 volts. Since the self-discharge rate for thin plate pure lead batteries is the lowest of all lead acid battery types, they don't need to be recharged for about two years if the temperature is around 77 degrees Fahrenheit. As we reach the end of our training today, I just want to emphasize a few points we've made. State of charge can be estimated by using open circuit voltage. It is the ratio of the current capacity in the battery to its rated capacity. We talked about several different types of battery voltage, including nominal, open circuit, on charge, and under load. All of these voltages have different meanings related to the battery condition when the reading was taken. Finally, it's good to understand state of charge so it can be used in troubleshooting situations, 
understanding how much longer the battery will run and in monitoring batteries in stock to keep them healthy. We want to thank you for attending our training on understanding state of charge today. We plan to have more of these training sessions in the future, so stay tuned for additional topics that we're going to cover. If you have questions that weren't answered today, feel free to email me at stacy.delzite at intersys.com or you can call our technical support group at 1-800-964-2837. Thanks.